So you guys ready to get started? We'll start. Uh, well, first, thank you guys all for being on this call. I am so excited. I think that this is such a great opportunity to inject some fun and family and community and just really lighten up the mood for everything that's been going on over the last little bit. And uh, obviously you guys care about keeping that community strong, over delivering to your clients, to your members, and to, you can extend this beyond your client base. You can do this with your family and friends to stay connected. We're gonna share some really fun ideas and games on how to just keep that connection and that social life going <laughs> while we're all stuck at home in our living rooms. So I've got two very amazing women that I want to introduce you to. I don't see Carrie or you're my screen. There you are. And there's Missy. I've got Miss Carrie Walsh and Missy Ballison, and I've known them both for years. And I really don't know two ladies that are better at creating a sense of family and community and loving on their clients and just really being there for support every step of the way. And they're got the most generous giving hearts. In fact, this whole presentation came about because of a conversation that I was having with Carrie and she was talking about the incredible socials that she was running virtually with her clients and how much of a difference it was making in like an impact on their emotional health and their feeling of like really being connected. And I'm like, we got to get you on for a training because what you're doing with your group is absolutely amazing. Um, and then in more conversations, and I was talking with Missy, she was like, check out all these games and all these fun things. And here's some things that I've been doing in my group. I'm like, Missy, please come on the call as well with us because uh, both of you ladies have so much to share and to offer. They both run amazing businesses and it's just heart centered businesses. And I think that this is really a fun way to be able to keep the social aspect going fun, build that connection with your clients. And also really this is their outlet to the outside world right now. You are probably one of their only ways <laughs> that they're going to connect with people in their community right now. Uh, unless they're FaceTiming with their family. So I want to do an official intro. Let me pull these up um, because I want to do both of these ladies amazing justice here. So Carrie Walsh, Carrie runs an all women's boot camp in Houston, Texas, and works with women to help them discover their true self worth and redefine the unhealthy eating patterns and behaviors that have kept them stuck yo yo dieting through her Diet Terminator program. This program allows her not only to coach her clients with a, with a program to help them find their food freedom, but also has allowed her to work with other health and wellness professionals to bring this knowledge to the wellness industry in hopes of helping many people overcome the food addiction and unhealthy behaviors, which is so important. Got by as a side note, the program is amazing. So if you want to connect with Carrie outside of this call, please do because it's absolutely incredible. Um, and just for fun, and I can't believe I didn't even know that you've had them for five years, but she has a family of four dogs that found her. <laughs> she calls them mama, daddy, baby girl, and baby boy because she didn't plan on keeping them. And five <laughs> years later, yep, I see them running around at the house all the time. <laughs> And then Missy, Missy Ballison has been a personal trainer, massage therapist for 27 years. Uh, she has a small studio, 2,000 square feet, which is absolutely beautiful, um, that she and her husband built on their property in Sandpoint, Idaho, where she works with peri and menopausal women and has three super awesome kids. And she looks like the brothers and sisters. <laughs> and she's run two Ironman triathlons and 20 plus tri uh, marathons, Missy. Come on, like underachievers here. <laughs> <laughs> but ladies, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much both for being here um, and for just sharing your time and the strategies and things that have been working for you in your business with your clients. And also they've done a little research to find some fun games that would also be super fun to run as a virtual social. So get your uh, pens out, take, get ready to take some notes. We're going to go through, do you guys all have the doc pulled up uh, over here? Let me just post it one more time in case you guys are just popping up. So that is the outline for what we're going to go over for the call. So let's talk about, Carrie, let's talk about why the community social aspect and doing things outside of your normal live streamings with your workouts is so important. Okay. So I, um, first of all, thank you for having me here. Can you hear me? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So thank you. Thank, thank you for having me here. I really appreciate it. Um, and I run 
outside. I run um, events outside of my boot camp, and this is something um, that I do to bring my my girls together and be close and bonded. So this is something I already had in in my business, um, and it's a big part of our group. So the online just kind of I had to get thrown into it, <laughs> um, but the the feedback that i'm getting from them because i'm always asking for feedback the feedback that i'm getting from them is how because they're so used to that this is helping them to just feel and stay connected because everyone's feeling you know just monica said it perfectly earlier like everything she was saying i was like that's exactly what my clients are saying is that they just feel so connected and they need that um and i think it's important for them to feel connected right now, um, mentally, physically, and spiritually. And so um, I'm really excited to talk about this today because it, it's, it's, made, it's made a difference in them staying connected, I mean, uh, staying mindfully move, moving and, you know, staying focused on their health during this time and not spiraling into who knows, you know, binge eating or just, you know, laying on the couch, eating bonbons, watching Netflix. <laughs> so um, that's the feedback that I'm getting. It's just the accountability of continuing to do what we're already doing. Mm -hmm. Perfect. And it's important not only from the client perspective, but for us as a coach <laughs> and as a business owner, right? So for us to be able to stay connected with our clients and really get the pulse of what's going on in their life, because in the workout, there's only so much you're going to be able to do in a workout. But if you're doing a social, you're going to get a really good feel for emotionally how your clients are doing. You're going to see them. You're going to watch them engage. And if you see any things that, you know, this person may be a little bit not acting as they normally do, they're not as excited, they're not as uh, positive that's the time where you're going to be like, okay, this person needs an extra reach out, pick up the phone and call. This is where the personal connection really needs to step up and pay attention to like little signals and things that you notice that aren't normal with your, with your tribe. Yeah, absolutely. So, awesome. Missy, anything to add there? Um, just, I like what you just said about that. We don't see their eyes. We don't see their body posture. You know, when somebody walks in your studio, your gym, and you're like, something's not right with them. So I really like what you just said there about really touching base. You know, it can be hard with all the different, you know, pictures. We've got 50 pictures on our screen, but spending a minute to check in. Um, just on that note, I've, I've seen some little posts going around Facebook, and I can share it in our little doc or something. And it's basically, um, it says, uh, it's like little different colored hearts. And it says something about, you know, how are you doing, you know, right, right. now? Like, how are you mentally doing? And a, a pink heart means this and the blue heart means I'm not doing so great, you know, kind of ranks it and kind of falling in line with what you just said. That might be a great thing to throw into your client text and say, text me the heart, just another connection so that you can figure out where they really are in their, in their heart and then dive deeper there if you can't tell on the screen. But yeah, that's, that's a great that's idea. Awesome. I love that. I love that. All right. So let's dive in and we got some good stuff to go through. We'll try to go through it pretty quickly and then any questions and answers. Um, but most importantly, we want you guys to take action on this and get your social schedule. So that's your homework assignment. Uh, once this is over is to pick a date or you can take a survey. A lot of people are like, when's the best time to have a social for your clients? That depends on your group. It depends on what's going on. If they have families, they don't have families um, and what your general pop is. So do a survey hey I'm thinking about having a social Thursday night or Sunday afternoon or Saturday morning for coffee um, when would you prefer to have the social we'll get on the schedule and then whoever gets the most whichever time gets the most votes that's when I would get it scheduled so oh. let's talk Carrie real quick about tech and basics and then we'll get into the content and social ideas okay so um, I'm assuming that most of you have been on Alicia's um, all, all of her trainings. And so all the Zoom information that's out there, she has provided great information. So definitely refer back to that on any kind of basics of Zoom. Um, but, you know, make sure that, that your clients understand how to use it. If you haven't already been using it with them for online training um, or coaching. So, you know, going through the basics, and I actually held a, hey, let's get together and make sure everybody knows how to use this before we even did anything so that we weren't dealing with that during our, our happy hour time or workout time. But keeping in mind that happy hours typically are gonna be in the evening. And so your lighting is gonna be important. You don't wanna be you know, blacked out. <laughs> you wanna be able to see each other. 
And, you know, this is something you want to, you know, let them know as well. Make sure that they have lighting. Um, and then when you're talking with them, um, we have a tendency that, you know, we're looking down here or whatever. Look into your camera and try to make that eye contact, just like you do on a live video or any kind of video. Making sure you're having that, that connection because it's already uncomfortable for some people that you're doing this because they may not be used to it. Um, so having that eye contact connection is just as important having it here as it is in person. So, um, but it really, you know, kind of draws them in. And then using headphones to help minimize the background noise. Um, like an example, I have a bird. So if he hears all of y'all talking, he decides to chime in. So I always have my, my earbuds in um, just because, you know, of the background noise. Um, so, to, and, and it also kind of helps you to really focus and just hear what, for you to hear what's going on. Um, and then, so I want to touch a little bit on clients feeling uncomfortable. And I, I ran across this with people that was actually very shocking because I felt like they're kind of outgoing people, but they, on camera, they're not used to being, we're all used to being typically on Zooms and, and video they are not used to looking at themselves and if they struggle from any kind of body image issue or just you know insecurities or they may resist coming online um, or they may want to black themselves out or you know not put their camera on and so um i had conversations on the side with some of my clients that i found this to to be true and um but one of the things and that i had them do is if they're very uncomfortable, when you're online, if you're the presenter, when like I'm always next to Alicia on here, like you're always gonna, they're always gonna be next to the presenter so they can put a sticky note on their face if it's distracting for them to see themselves or it's just uncomfortable and that way they can focus on everybody else on the screen. Um, so that's something that could come in handy. Um, so glad that you said this and to me like that wasn't even on my radar to even think about having a sticky note over somebody's face and when you said that when we were talking about what we were going to talk about on the training I, like it just clicked and so for many of you like we just do this all the time we're in front we're in front and center but our clients are not our members are not so it's really important to be mindful and sensitive to that uh, that some people are even avoiding getting on the workouts because they don't want to be on camera. So yep. maybe even another level of that is to make sure that you're not recording your social, like there's a difference between being live and streaming versus being on a recording for some people too. So just be mindful and be sensitive to where that your members are at. Absolutely. Um, so I just think it's, you know, it's, it's important to, to bring that in, in and make sure that everyone is comfortable so that they, they relax and have a good time because that's what it's about, right? Um, and then, so getting all this together, uh, I always make sure I have a Facebook event. I make it official. It's not just a, hey, let's come hang out. It's a, hey, this is an event just like the ones that we normally hold outside of camp and um, that's going to be at this time this day. Um, and then, you know, posting it in, in my group, if you have a Facebook group for specifically for your clients, that's where I post that. And then definitely email them, you know, touching all the points of how you communicate with them. Um, we have a Facebook messenger. I always post the event in there to make sure everyone sees it. Um, and then, uh, and then announcing it, you know, during class. So just making sure you're hitting all the points of, of, um, your communications with them so that somebody doesn't get left out by accident. So. 100%. And in the Facebook group, if you've got less than 500 people in a group and you create the event, you can invite everybody all at once. If you've got more than 500, you can't. Um, but regardless, like for this, I set up an event in the group, right? Even though I didn't personally invite everybody, people were still RSVPing because they saw it um, and we were commenting on it. But yeah, if you have less than 500 members and you have a private group for your clients, definitely make an event in per and then invite everybody through that feature. Yeah. Awesome. All right, so we're gonna move on to actual content, fun, themes, games, things that you can do um, with your members. And hopefully you guys can all see this. If we need to post it, I'll post the link again, just in case you popped on a little bit later. But Missy, will you talk about, like you've already been running the rock, paper, scissors with your clients. Can you talk about, uh, we'll just go through in order. The first one is uh, rock, paper, scissors. And uh, you guys, so we're gonna go through like different ideas, fun games and topics for the social.
socials, and then we're going to talk about ways to really um, maximize the flow, make sure everything is smooth, and give you some tips and pointers for actually implementing these ideas. So that's how we're going to do it. So you're up, Missy. Okay. So uh, the other day I played this game during a workout, but you can definitely apply it to um, your social time. So we did rock, paper, scissors, where I, we did, we, I counted it out one, two, three, and I held my hand as the host, you know, where they couldn't see it. And then I asked everybody, you know, what was your, what did you get? Your rock, paper, scissors. And then I showed my hand and let's say I chose scissors. Um, um, the people that lost, as in the paper people, <laughs> they had to do so many burpees. The people that tied me had to do less burpees. And then the people that won had to do even less burpees. So we just, and then we would rotate around. Sometimes it was like skaters or um, what else did we do? We did like um, mountain climbers or something like that. So we use that as a finisher, but you could definitely just use that as a quick little opener, maybe as you're waiting for people to come into the room and just, just kind of play and lighten the mood because getting that interaction at first, some of you guys may have noticed that when people first come on, they're kind of awkward and they're not sure if they should talk or not talk. So that, um, that one, you could apply anything. It wouldn't necessarily have to be a physical activity. It could just be, um, it could be a truth or dare statement or something like that, which we're going to go into next. Are we, we're giving them the document of this, right? Did yeah, you I just post it again. So if you guys don't have it pulled up, I would pull it up and like look at it on the side of your screen as we go through it so you can see. Um, okay. But yeah, they should all have it. Yeah, so that one you can get really creative with and throw in whatever you want. I just use burpees as an example um, and just make it some kind of little challenge. Um, you could even dole out weekly tasks that way, maybe if, um, you know, weekly habit tasks. If you got a piece of paper, this is your habit task. If you got, you know, scissors, this is your task or something along those lines. Have it obviously planned out in advance. Um, so that's a little quickie. You want me to move on to the next one, the whodunit? Yes, this one is called Who Done It. Okay, so on this one, you are going to, I would suggest, we, we kind of talked about the size of the groups for these activities. Um, we talked about this one, maybe 12 to 15 people in your room, this would work for. Um, it would take a while to get through 50 people in a room on this, but you're gonna select maybe the number of rounds you're gonna play. So that way, if you do have a large group, there aren't people that are like, oh, I didn't get to play. You know, Obviously, if there's 20 people in your group and you say, we're gonna play five rounds of this, they know from the beginning that it's just gonna be sort of a hit and miss thing. So what you're gonna do is in the chat, you're gonna have everyone privately message you. So again, as Carrie mentioned, you wanna teach them how to do that first, um, how to privately message you something interesting that they have done or experienced. Um, and you want it, they, you know, suggest that they make it the weirdest, like almost most unbelievable thing that you can or that they can, um, or really unique or rare. And then you are gonna read that message out loud. You're not gonna say who it's from, um, and your clients are gonna try to guess who in the room that was that did that thing. Um, the other thing you could do, um, if you wanted to, is I'm gonna share, can I share my screen, Alicia? Yeah, of course. Thank you. So I put a couple tools in this. Um, let me get that up there. I put a few tools that are some pretty cool online um, little applications that you can use. So this one is the random name picker. We put links in the group for this. So you could use this for a lot of games, but in this one, if you're gonna do five rounds, you would then, you could put the name of the people, these were the names that came pre-populated, put the names of the people in here that are in your group. And then you just click the button. I just press it to spin and then it selects the person that's going to go that makes it a little bit fun it makes it a little something for them to look at and engage with and it it's not like you're sitting there. <laughs> i don't know i forgot about that part <laughs> that's super fun i mean when is commit but you know so, <laughs> so that's fun. That this is actually how we kind of random engage. winners too this is a yeah. really good tool too. Yeah. For random winners for um, like raffles and if, you know, people, okay, comment below and we'll enter you into a raffle, something like that. And even my challenges in the FBFF group, this is what we use. We put everybody's name on the wheel and then we spin it and that's how we pick a winner. So you can it's do a lot of so many things. things. You could actually put in, instead of names, you could put in exercises. You could do that kind of thing, you know, just spin the wheel and that's the exercise they have to do. You can use it for collecting. You numbers. can do that for assigning burpees. Like there's one lucky winner from person has to do 20 burpees at the end of the world. <laughs> yeah. You it. could have multiple screens open in the background too and have one for names, one for, if you're going to use it several times. 
Um, you could play Wheel of Fortune type games with it. But yeah, there's a lot, a lot of uh, variety you could use with that one. So you could, again, that's how you could use to select which five people you're going to do. So then in the Who Done It, the clients are trying to guess by posting in the chat who it was that did that crazy thing. Okay. Um, so the next one is truth or dare. You could get real crazy with this depending on your um, clientele and their personalities and kind of your jive that you've got going in your gym. So you're going to put the names of the participants into that random name picker. Um, you'll share your screen as you save the, or as you spin the wheel. And then the person whose names pops up, you're going to ask them a question and they can choose to answer it or they can choose to do some other dare burpees. Again, always burpees, but whatever you want to, you know, get creative there. I mean, if, if you've got a drinking crowd and that's like your theme, I mean, they could, they could take shots or <laughs> I, it's not my crowd, but that's the pomegranate yeah. juice. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Something like that. <laughs> so you bring a healthy drink, shots of their smoothie. That would be a good way to do it. Something. So, you know, it's encouraging health. And then we gave you a big list of questions here. Um, I tried to pick a big variety of different questions. Some that people would be likely to answer and others that they wouldn't, some that might embarrass them, some that might be hilarious. And so of course, you know your crowd and you can almost select that question based on the person um, that, you know, that you're choosing because you know their personality, you know, they might be a little more brave and answer a question and it might lead into something hilarious. Um, the next one is two truths and a lie. So kind of similar, not really truth or dare, I guess, um, kind of similar to the who done it. So you're going to instruct each player to think of three statements about themselves. I would probably let them know this in advance because when it comes to everybody being on a screen and then I know in Alicia's coaching group, sometimes she'll ask us a question and you're, you're like, Oh darn it. Think of that. And don't pick me. Don't pick me. <laughs> so if they know in advance what you're playing, that might help them to have the statements prepared. So two statements are true. One is false. And then each person goes around and, says the statement and other people have to guess which one is true and which one's false. And so for that, you can choose to, um, um, you could choose to put that in the chat or have people piping out or what have you. So that one's kind of fun because that one allows everybody to get to know each other a little bit better and learn some things about um, the people that they didn't know and they don't have time to learn in the middle of a workout. So now when we get back together, they're going to be laughing about Penny's hilarious thing that she did, um, you know, milk through her nose or whatever <laughs> that she did. And that could very easily become the common joke that you are carrying through the gym down the road here. So I think that these games offer a lot of opportunity for making your community amazing, not just now, but down the road too. Okay. So this one is my favorite. The next one is Jim Jeopardy. Okay. I'm going to share my screen again, but, um, I'm sure everybody has seen the game called Jeopardy. Uh, if you haven't, I would definitely recommend watching a video on YouTube of how to play the game, um, before you go through it. Um, but I'm gonna share my screen again. So I ended up fine. I was going to make my own little version of this and I just thought, well, I might as well search it. Why, why do all that work? <laughs> I don't have to. And uh, let me find it here. Oop, hang on a sec. Uh, and it turns out that there is some guy that made this um, online version of Jeopardy. There it is. Uh, based on fitness for us. So I put a link again in the document there. So what you're going to do here is you're going to pick, this is health and fitness jeopardy. You're going to pick your teams. I'm just going to pick two teams um, and then click start. And there's this complete board made for you with all of the questions ready to go. So I'm going to click, what I'm going to do is break my group into two teams. I'm going to ask the teams to select the order of, um, order of play. So um, if there's these five people on my team, Susie's going to go first, Becky's going to go second, John's going to go third, Susan's going to go fifth, or that would be fourth. <laughs> um, so that that's all kind of organized in advance. So again, you're not spending all this time trying to figure, oh, I'll go, I'll go. No, I don't want to go. So have it all kind of lined out in advance. So who's, who's going first? So the way Jeopardy is played is I'm on my team, I'm on team one and um, I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to take nutrition for 100. If you click on this, it's already populated with fitness, simple fitness questions. Um, as the host, you're the one that's clicking this and you're sharing your screen so they can see it. 
Um, and in order to reveal the question, so I'm going to ask my participants, okay, your body is like a blank. Whatever you put in is what you get out. She answers. I click space bar up here at the top right and it populates with the question, which is so, it's so done for you. It's really fun. If she's on team one, I come down here and I just give them a hundred points. And then she gets to go again, what I would suggest, so everyone gets to play, so there's not like one brainiac dominating, is then go to their participant number two. So team one's participant number two gets to go. So you're gonna click escape, and then you're gonna go, you know, Becky's number two, and she's like, okay, I'll take nutrition for 200. And then we go through the process again, and you can give them their points right here. Um, I was hoping for some big fancy celebration at the end of this, nothing. <laughs> But you could go to the wheel and uh, get, get the confetti again when somebody wins. So basically, you're the host and you're running the game board and you're kind of directing the questions. Um, and then, but there is one to note here. This is random. I went through all these questions. This one under random 500, I have no idea who this person is. Alicia, we think he's awesome. the creator of the game. We're not sure. We have no I idea. <laughs> I, even Googled it. I don't even know how to say that name, but I Googled it and some race car driver came up. So for that weird one, you cannot, unless you join this as like $20 to join this, or this is free when I'm showing you here, but you could join this if it's something you're going to use all the time. I think it was like 20 bucks a month or 20, I don't remember, $20 for either a year or a month, but you could just substitute any random question that you want for this. Um, and you can still give your person points, even if they don't get the right answer or whatever. So that one I thought was super cool just because it's all done for you. Super simple. The questions are pretty straightforward. Most of your clients are going to know the answers. Um, and yeah, that one is super fun. I saw Jason said, this is awesome. I know that one is a blast. I think I'm going to, I think that's the first one I'm going to do. I think that's one way to think about it. Make sure whichever game you pick first, is one that you're pretty sure your clients are gonna, it's gonna go smooth, it's gonna be fun and hilarious, and that's gonna encourage them to come back. If you pick one that you're not quite sure about and there's a lot of weird, awkward silence, you know, nobody loves awkward silence. <laughs> so I think pick the one you feel the most confident and excited about first, and then that kind of sets the tone for the rest of your things. Okay, so the next one is Pictionary. Um, you guys remember that one? You break into two teams and uh, each one team gets a, a uh, subject to draw and the other team has to guess what it is. But I also, again, I found this super cool um, whiteboard. You guys probably already know about this, but I just figured this out and thought it was so neat. So it's an online <laughs> whiteboard. Let me share again. Uh, is that it? No, it's this one. It's called Zeitboard. And again, we put links for this in the doc. So what you could do is give your clients, put the link to this Zeitboard in the chat so that everybody that's playing the game can pull it up in the background and then they can share their, their post. So let's say it's Christine. It's Christine's turn to go. Christine shares her screen and she starts drawing. So I'm just pressing my cursor <laughs> and um, making these little drawings here. That, that oh, first one. <laughs> Whatever that, yeah, goldfish. I, <laughs> so what you're going to do is share with her privately in a private message what she's going to draw. So if it, Alicia drew a cute little dumbbell this morning. So if it's a dumbbell, you're going to share a private message with her in the chat saying, Christine, you're drawing a dumbbell. <coughs> Excuse me. And then everybody else is trying to guess. You can have them shout it out or you can have them put it in the chat, however you want to run that. And then you would just be keeping score. I'm sure there's some kind of online scorekeeper too. I didn't look one up, but I'm certain that there's got to be some simple online scorekeeper that you can do to keep score for that. So again, that one's just, you could pick a certain number of points that you're going to go to or, you know, choose how, what your stopping and starting point is on that one. So I don't know. I'm sure everybody knew about that whiteboard. I was so stoked. No, right? I didn't know about that particular site. Michelle asked, how hard is it to use the whiteboard? And it's, you put the URL in and then you just move your mouse around when you click it. That's all you do. It's so easy. Yeah. So my dumbbell came out great this morning. It was beautiful. <laughs> yeah. it was very, very nicely proportioned. Um, <laughs> uh, somebody asked, even with a cell phone, ooh, that's a, let's see. Can you share your screen on a you cell phone? You know what? I wouldn't do. Oh, if your clients are on the cell phone, I would really encourage them to join from a computer just so they can see everybody. You really want them to get the best experience and there's limited view 
with everybody else when you're on the cell. So to try to encourage them on an iPad or a, a computer if possible. <laughs> Sorry, and Zoom, Zoom does have a whiteboard function, but uh, to te- I don't know if that's easy to teach everybody as easy as putting in the URL. So, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. And that, again, that one was really simple. When I first went on, I had to um, just delete a bunch of little things that were on the board. Alicia, you didn't seem to have to do that on yours when we went no, on. This- I didn't have to do any of that. It was just, it was just little pictures of things like little tutorials. And I just clicked on each one. I clicked on it disappeared. I don't, I'm not sure why that was. Maybe I didn't have that either when I clicked on it. it just oh, okay. Out. Yeah. I don't know why mine was like that, but, um, somebody, oh, somebody said zoom has, a, yeah. Okay. Zoom has a whiteboard function in share. Yep. So here yeah. that. I haven't. Okay. Oh yeah. That'll be totally the same thing. Oh, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Good. Then you don't even have to use the outside URL. Cool. Okay, let me, oops, I gotta make you guys a little bit smaller so I can, all right, what was next? We have, oh yeah, blind drawing, kind of the flip of that. You could pick a person and have, so you know, it's basically the same thing. You're picking a person um, to do a drawing. You don't even know what it is. That way you can participate too um, and just be kind of part of the fun that way. So it's kind of, oh no, I'm sorry. They're drawing it with their eyes closed. That's what it is. So there, you can you can give them an item to draw. They have to draw it with their eyes closed, and everybody has to guess. So you can even start with Pictionary and then spice it up a little by adding the blind drawing to it. I like it. Monica thought that was really funny. Yeah, <laughs> that could be really cute. Um, and you know, after a couple shots of smoothie, who knows what you're gonna get? <laughs> the other thing is too. I mean, if you know that your crowd is kind of a funny, hilarious, I got this one gal Penny that is so funny. I would totally give her free reign to draw whatever she wanted because it would be so impromptu and hilarious that it would everybody would love it because it's her personality to do something like that. Um, so our next one is show and tell. We have two little options for this. Um, one is um, showing um, a project that your clients have been working on. I know a lot of my gals have been painting or maybe they're building something or making masks like Amy and our mastermind group is making a ton of awesome masks um, and letting each person go around and kind of show what they're doing. One, because it's really cool. It helps you get to know them. And two, it might inspire somebody else that's sitting there like not trying to figure out what to do with their life right now to um, to have a project to create. The other thing is it could also inspire, let's say we're talking about Amy who's making all these, these um, you know, masks or hospital workers. Maybe she then leads into teaching us a tutorial later on on how to do that. So we are gonna learn these different skills other people have and some people might be like, I wanna do that. And then now your client can be leading a happy hour or a little um, workshop or something. Um, and then the other option is to have each person share one item from their home. Um, and what it means to them, where they got it. Maybe they went on a really cool trip or something like that. Um, and let's see. Uh, let's see, we've got a couple on this one, drawing names to assign names to each person. And they have to write something about that. Oh, that's the inspiration one. Um, writing, uh, so we're going to assign each person in the group the name of somebody else in the group. <laughs> are you fixing that? Yeah. <laughs> and um they are going to, so if I get Alicia, I'm going to share something that inspires me about Alicia or something I've learned from her. Um, we talked about this one being best for groups of 10 or less because then you get into, um, you know, that could take forever. Um, and then um, jokes. So everyone shares a joke and, and maybe they know this in advance because as Carrie and I talked, we talked about we're not good at telling jokes. So Dr. <laughs> Google is always, or university, Google University, always good for getting a good joke. Yeah. Um, so yeah, coming in advance with those. The other thing I think as we're talking about this is deciding on the size of your group and deciding like if you're going to just let it go with all the people participate or choose a certain number or even break your group into mini groups and say, okay, these five people are going to play this game. These five people are going to play this game so that it, everybody gets a chance to participate if they want, or even giving them a choice. Do you want to participate today? Or do you just want to sit back and watch? Because as, as Carrie said, some people are, they want to be part of that connection, but they're not really comfortable being right in front yeah. of the group. So that's our games. I think we hit them all. We did. That should give you plenty of ideas for games for your people. Um, and now those are definitely, now depending on if you're doing like hot seat style or whatnot, could be more beneficial for smaller groups up to 25, 30 people. 
Um, but the educational presentation workshop style socials, um, those are going to be great for any size. So Carrie, do you want to talk about real quick the, um, the different dynamics for the educational presentation style socials? Sure. Um, so uh, we, kind of, we came up with these. And so cooking class, if you have, um, you know, a recipe that you want to share with your clients, you could do a cooking class and make it like a nutrition education type, you know, workshop. These kind of fold into each other, but, um, you know, you could do a flexibility type, you know, where you got, you get your foam rollers. Like I like the, the foam roll and coffee. So if you do, you're going to do a coffee get together instead of maybe like everybody drinking a, an adult beverage and getting on a foam roller, probably not a good idea. Um, but, you know, having coffee in the morning with if you if your group is used to meeting in the morning and just have like kind of a chit chat morning while you're foam rolling and you can teach them foam rolling because um, kind of the same uh, I'm in the same situation, you know, we're at camp, we're going, we're doing our thing and we don't really get into a lot of that um, as a group and, um, you know, on, on a consistent basis. So this is a really good time to educate uh, all of your clients on different topics and you know most people don't stretch and foam roll enough so this is a great time to educate them and actually help them um, you know learn how to do it properly and you know cooking classes can be fun they you can have somebody else do a cooking class you know even if it's not you if you've got somebody in your group who just like loves to cook and is always coming up with, you know, let, give them the floor and let them shine. You know, you can, you can, you don't always have to be the, the, the leader. Well, I mean, you're the leader, but you don't always have to be the only one doing the big thing. Mm -hmm. um, so if you've got someone in your class that has a special something about them, um, you know, making projects, you know, like the whole project thing, you know, if you, if they've got, if they, I don't know, if they sew or build or I don't know, if they do carpentry work or something, you know, they can always do a little bit of fun education there too around that because really those things, those kind of things are self care. You know, you're, you're getting your mind off of the world and um, you're kind of, you know, having some self care time. And so really helping them to think of different ways to stay busy and take care of themselves and their family during this time, you know, just being, making it educational. So. Love it. And also, I did see a couple comments in there about uh, they want an alcohol-free social. All of these can probably yeah. should be alcohol-free socials. Um, so they're just ideas. And like we had our Friday night at 6 p.m. was called happy hour. Like that, the workout was their happy hour. So don't mean like when we say the word happy hour, it doesn't mean you're drinking alcohol. <laughs> it's just this is their fun social time ready to connect. Um, so yeah, all of these can be done absolutely without alcohol. Just wanted to make that clear. And I think it would be super fun in the morning, like on a Saturday morning to have some, make a smoothie, you guys maybe show how you're making a smoothie, then head over in the living room with a foam roller or a lacrosse ball or something. And then you guys can all roll out together and share gratitude and go around with some of the conversation starters and the, uh, co the questions that we have for you below. Um, so yeah, absolutely. And just be creative with this. Have fun. You know your people. Survey them if you want. Pop on a call and find out what they want to learn more about or what they need right now in their life and then give them that. Provide that um, support and accountability for them. So Carrie, yeah. I'm jumping on your cooking class, my admin, Kisera, wave Kisera, she's here today. <laughs> she's, uh, she has a culinary, um, she has a culinary degree. And so she's going to be doing our cooking class. So it just made me thinking about um, you know, using your coaches and your admins to what are their talents to add in to those things too. And that makes a better connection with your community. Plus they may never have known that, you know, this person has a gardening, has gardening skills or, you know, whatever that they're yes. teaching. Yes. You can have like family fun game night too. Like if people have kids, invite their, the whole family to join in for a social one time. Yeah. So, yeah. I love being on video. <laughs> <laughs> Like you can have kids dance parties and it can be as simple as that. <laughs> yes. Um, and then another idea that um, I came up with, I mean, I didn't come with, up with, but it's book club. You know, if you um, have a book that you are reading that you think would be great for your clients or there's a book that you would love for them to read. I mean, now's a good time. We have a lot of downtime. Most people have a lot of downtime. And um, so it might be a good idea to start a book club and you can even, your whole happy hour doesn't have to be about the book 
Um, it could be, you know, the first 15 minutes or whatever. Um, but just kind of bringing in again, an educational piece or an inspirational piece in their life, um, to get them, you know, for them to continue focusing on their health and wellness. Um, cause really a lot of this is around helping them in fun ways to stay focused on their health and wellness during this time. Cause it's so easy to slip into old habits or, um, you know, just areas that, you know, they don't necessarily have time for in a normal life. <laughs> so. 100%. And you guys, your clients and your members are going to look forward to this. It gives them something on their schedule. <laughs> Most <laughs> people don't have anything on their schedule right now. So no. it's really important for them to have something to look forward to. So schedule these in advance. Uh, and you can even have them like, Carrie, you do yours every Friday night, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. So she's got a regular weekly social for her clients. Um, so really just pick what, you know, the good at whatever spacing weekly wouldn't be too much right now. People need that in their yeah. life. So if your people are showing up, keep offering it. I'm even having these as a side note, I'm even having these with uh, other businesses that I collaborate with the owners and that's helping keep the networking and collaboration going too. So just as a side note. Yeah. And I you can that. make it fun and do like a raffle or a prize on every social and like have something fun where you're giving out a t-shirt to somebody who attends the social. Um, and then you use the wheel of names to pick the winner or something like that. So like you can make it fun and in the beginning to get the ball rolling, sometimes you need to like give people an extra reason to show up just because if it's, they don't really know what it's all about yet, they might let a little fear set in like, Oh, maybe I'll catch the next one. Give them an extra reason to show up. Yeah. So Alicia, on that note, I was, you know, our town being a small um, ski resort town, shopping local is a really big deal. And I'm sure that is in a lot of places and that local economy is really getting a little panicky right now. So a, a gift certificate for $25 to a local shop or something like that. Yes. So good. good, Missy. Such a great way to involve local, other local business owners. Yeah. Or even have them on and do like a little mini training or yeah. shop style type like thing. Carrie mentioned, you know, it could be cool too to have, um, like a highlighted store. So we have an outdoor experience, an outdoor store, and maybe she could go around and show, you know, what she's got in stock. She's not open, but she is taking sales and, you know, kind of zooming with her. So promoting those local businesses. I think Kathy Borman did an interview with a physical therapist on Zoom side by side. Just, you know, I think that's a cool idea. I also want to show you super quick. I did a calendar for my folks. Um, because I feel like we're all getting inundated with so much stuff that one of the things I thought of my, my girls, and in fact, I did this right before my billing, like the week before my next billing round so that they, they knew what was coming. They knew that we had a ton of stuff packed for them so that they felt secure in what was coming up and that they weren't going to be paying their dues for like maybe some random length. Uh, or live stream on Facebook or something that they knew there was a schedule. And then we put, um, well, oh, sorry, this is an abbreviated version. I shared with a different group, but on Wednesdays, we have uh, a full lineup of workshops. We did a fat metabolism one yesterday. We we're we're going to do a menopausal one. We have a self-defense guest, guest instructor coming. And so this whole thing was filled out. So, and then the happy hours and things like that. So that way they kind of know um, in advance what's happening if you want to schedule it and they feel secure. I think everybody needs some security and they need some structure right now. So I think structure. Yeah. Yeah. Love that, Missy. All right. Let's talk about the flow to make sure we're avoiding awkward silences. <laughs> so, you know, start to finish um, a really great way to, to seamlessly transition between the beginning and how to close out and get your social and have everybody have a fun time. So, um, Carrie, do you want to just go through the flow real quick and some tips and pointers to help it get you get through it? Sure. Effortlessly? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, I like to set the tone of, because there, you can have so many different types of happy hours or get togethers. Um, so I like to set the tone and um, depending on what type you have, you can have like, you know, show up in your PJs, let's have coffee together or show up in your PJs, let's, you know, have happy hour in the comfort of your own home. Or you could have a, hey, everybody put on makeup, do your hair and dress up and let's have a night out, but in, you know. Um, because right now, a lot of people are getting, oh, do I take a shower today or do I not take a shower today? 
I'm seeing a lot of that. And so, um, you know, that might be a good way because you feel good when you, uh, you know, show up dressed, right? Um, but I love to start my, all of my online um, coaching calls, happy hours, everything with a, um, a power pose. And I think, Alicia, were we going to share a link? Oh, Amy Cuddy is the, yes, I'll, I'll grab a link for her. Okay, awesome. So um, again, if you have people that are uncomfortable on camera, you know, you might encourage them. They can turn their camera off for this part because they might feel more comfortable doing it, but, you know, standing up and, you know, opening their chest and putting their hands on their hips and really just whatever their power pose, pose is, you know, like putting their arms in the, in the air and just like opening their chest and feeling that energy come up through them. And they are going to be a lot more responsive and awake <laughs> on the call. And so I love to start with a power pose. I even start, sometimes I start, if the energy is real low in my boot camp, I'll start my, my day with the, or the group with a power pose. Um, and then to start out, you know, you get on and you're kind of chit chatting and you may get, have some get on early. I um, mean, just like we started today with an icebreaker, um, you know, start with an icebreaker, start with some community building. How's everybody doing, um, going around? How, what are some wins for today? You know, did you get up and get dressed today? You know, um, I mean, that's a win right now for some people. Um, you know, things that they're, gra that they're grateful for. That's a really big one right now too, because um, keeping in a positive mindset and really helping them to focus on the things that there's so much to be grateful for right now. Just the fact that we can all connect on Zoom is, to, you know, something to be grateful for. So, um, you know, really just setting that tone of a positive, fun, um, empowering uh, kind of call or, or happy hour. Um, I keep calling it a call and it's really a happy hour. <laughs> um, so, you know, making social cho coaches choice. I'm not sure. Oh, that's the actual social itself. But oh. yeah, and to piggyback on what you said about the icebreakers, on the bottom of the sheet, there's 10 like conversation starters, icebreaker questions. Um, that you guys can use. And even the ones that Missy had uh, above here for like weird questions you can ask, like what was the last thing you searched for on your phone? Like you can totally use those as icebreaker questions and whatnot. But I think it's really important right now, um, if you're just getting started with socials, focus on something really positive, like a win or something you're grateful for or something positive that they've learned or gotten out of this whole situation. I think that would be a really great way to, to start. And then you can transition into some of the other. Yeah. Styles. And to add to that, um, like something unique about yourself, you know, again, a way to learn about people. Um, so, you know, there's all kinds of ways you can bring those questions in. Um, so have your, you know, your, your social hour and then, um, Go, going into closing, close out ideas, um, you can do, you can end it with a mini goal setting, you know, like have a habit this week of drinking water or getting in more veggies or, you know, getting adequate sleep and really focus on those small habit changes that um, they, a lot of times when they're in the hustle and bustle of life, oh, I don't have time, oh, I forgot, you know, all the wonderful excuses that we hear and really hone in on those many goal settings right now and those, ha those habit challenges um, because they do have the time and energy to put towards it um, and get them, you know, kind of moving in that direction. And then um, you could also close out with um, either you coming up with an empowering or inspirational quote or message, or you could even pick someone ahead of time and say, hey, you know, I'm loving your attitude in class and how, you know, how you're handling this whole situation. And I would love for you to, you know, speak about that and just have something inspirational, bringing them into it. So again, bringing them and making it not just about you running this, but it is a community effort. Um, and then mindful movement challenge for the weekend, uh, especially right now, even if it's going on a walk with your family, connecting with your family, getting away from technology, going on a walk, um, and really just having some mindful movement. Um, and then what, uh, when is your next round, you know, asking the question, you know, keeping them accountable. When is your next workout going to be, you know, outside of class? Uh, you know, when, when can we hold you accountable and then have them, you know, post it. If you've got a Facebook group, 
post in that Facebook group and let us know when you did it. So let us know when you're going to do it and then let us know that you did it. Um, and then schedule a reminder, uh, schedule and remind of the next social. So if you've already got it scheduled, you're on a, you know, every Friday night at six o'clock, or you can go ahead and have the discussion there of, okay, let's, you know, let's decide when we want to meet up again or whatever, what works for everybody. Um, so just having that kind of closing out conversations on a positive note in any way that you do it. I love it. And I think that's really cool. If you don't have a regular schedule for your socials to be like, raise your hand if you're good for next Friday at six o'clock again to do another social and everybody raises their hand. And if they can't like pick a different time. So it's once everybody's on there, that's the best time to uh, honestly be able to reschedule another one if you don't have it on, on the calendar on a regular basis. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, so here's what we were talking about, that awkward silence type of situation that can happen. Um, and it happened on the call, <laughs> weirdly enough, we're my husband's birthday party and everybody's best friends. Um, so it was just weird that that even happened, but you wanna make sure that that's not like a regular occurrence. If it happens, no big deal, but you wanna just make sure it's not an ongoing thing. Um, so having icebreaker, and Carrie, I'll let you talk about all this because you put this list together here. Um, but ways to uh, make sure that that doesn't happen uh, while you're running your social. Yeah. So um, like Alicia said there, I provided some um, icebreaker uh, questions for you guys. But one of the tools that I love to use, and I gave my clients actually these for um, Christmas, and it's a great tool to even have a conversation with yourself because a lot of times we have a hard time with coming up with those questions. But there's this, I don't know if you can see this, um, uh, my intent is what it's called myintent.org and it's a deck of cards and it's all different kind of questions some are deep some are light some you know one card is like just having someone stop and breathe so it's a really good um, connection for themselves just to stay connected with you know how they're feeling with their body their mind and um, but it's a it's a good one to bring into the group as well and so like, because I gave all of my clients this, I can, I can have them come to class and everybody pick a card and answer the question. So you can make it a game. You can make it as part of the game, but it's a good uh, tool to have in order, you know, to bring in the icebreakers. So to have the go-to questions, have your list of questions for that awkward silent moment, because they're, go they're it's going to happen. And then you're sitting there if you have no questions and you're kind of like, ah, what do I say? So be prepared for that because it's going to happen, you know, plan for, plan for the, the unknown. Um, and then ask open-ended questions because we, you know, just, these are just like normal conversation things that maybe we just don't think of when we're online or just in conversation, but make sure that you're asking open-ended questions or if you're, you know, educating about something or just having a conversation, you know, have a question, a follow-up question to whatever it is you're talking about. Um, and then if you have someone who is, you know, answering a question or telling a story or talking about their experience or whatever it is, um, you know, have them, if, if you, if you want to, if there's just kind of that silence and you want them to, and you want people to get involved, maybe say, wow, that's really awesome. That's great. Tell, tell us some more about that. Um, or if they're kind of pulled back and they're not, they're a little bit shy, you can kind of help gently pull them out and get them comfortable on camera and talking. Um, and then jokes, we talked about jokes. Jokes are always good to make, you I know. I have a joke. Yeah. I have a coronavirus joke. <laughs> Please tell us. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, did you guys hear that Chuck Norris got the coronavirus? I told us and I don't, nobody laughed and I was so upset. Did you guys hear that Chuck Norris got the coronavirus? No. Now the coronavirus is in quarantine for two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the only person I think that's funny. <laughs> I love Chuck Norris. You guys, you have to look up Chuck Norris or uh, what is it? Where is Chuck Norris or what, something? What do you look up on Google? Where is Chuck Norris? Oh, you look up where, where do I find Chuck Norris? And then on Google, you click the first thing that pops up and it says, you can't find Chuck Norris. Chuck Norris finds you. <laughs> I like that. Anyway, okay, we can move on. <laughs> so um, I personally have a small group of women that I work with, but we wanted to make sure that, you know, we touched everybody because some of you have large groups of, you know, 25, 30 or plus. And, um, but for, for 
smaller groups under 25 or 30. Um, a good way to start, uh, especially right now, I think is on the wins and the gratitude. One, it brings everybody in um, to, you know, into the conversation. And, um, and then it, it starts you off on such a really positive note. I mean, just think about, you know, if you've ever been on coaching calls with a business coach or whatever, I mean, typically we start with wins. Um, and then considerations for groups larger. Um, one of the things that we have talked about, and I have never personally used this, so I, it, I apologize if I can't answer a question on it, but breakout rooms uh, in Zoom are great. So let's say you have, you know, 30 people, 50 people, and you want to do these games. You know, you've all got leaders in your, in your tribe, right? You've all got leaders in your uh, clients. Um, you can handpick those people and say, hey, we're going to break out in a room and I want you to be a lead. So then you're bringing them in, you're making them feel really good about themselves. And then you're breaking them out into groups in Zoom. So there may be only five people in there so they can easily play these games and really have conversation and get to know each other. Um, so you can strategically place people. So if you know you've got somebody who's really quiet, um, but they're good friends with someone and they might feel more comfortable in the group or whatever, um, a five with that person, they might open up a little bit more. Um, you know, you can strategic, strategically place them. You can also do a random, like you can just click and it'll random and you decide it lets you pick how many rooms. So if you know how many people about you have, you can pick how many rooms and, um, and it'll break everybody up. And then, you know, everybody's got their, their room of playing their game or doing their thing and enter, you know, really enter, uh, getting to know each other and engaging. Um, and then best ideas are, are for more presentation style cooking classes, which we kind of talked about already, you know, above is, you know, having those cooking classes so that you can have everybody on the screen um, or doing a, you know, a workshop of some kind. Um, and then hot seat style, um, since they can't go through each person, you can always say, okay, you know, we're going to do, we're going to have a hot seat tonight and whatever questions or whatever game or whatever it is you're playing, then you could do either the, the wheel. So it picks the person. So that takes the pressure off of you. Um, or um, if you know, you have some, some, you know, people that are, are really good, you can always pick on them first, not pick on them, but pick them <laughs> first to kind of get the energy flowing in the game or whatever it is that you're, what you're doing. So, um, so there's several, you know, there's all kinds of ways that you can do things. These are just things that we came up with and hopefully it's helpful and kind of getting your creative juices going. So, uh, we'll there's see. a lot of great ideas popping up in the chat too. People are throwing out there <clears throat> and yeah. we're talking at a couple of quick questions as my cat was waving his bum. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've noticed that a lot of my clients, their animals are joining in the workouts and that could be kind of fun to do, like bring your pet and let's just be your pet because that's just an inside look at people's life, you know, uh, maybe their face would be better to see than their butts. <laughs> <laughs> The animals. It. it was a pie chart of like the average Zoom session now that everybody's streaming online and like 15% of it was watching people's cats walk across their keyboard. <laughs> it is so funny. Um, another little thought I had too was uh, something Carrie said made me think of this is we're, we're going to have um, next week, I think it is, I'm, one of our challenges is to have our clients create their Zen zone in their home. Because as the stresses start to build, um, I've been talking to them about creating a reset. When you start to feel that fear and that stress coming up, what's your reset? What's your trigger going to be to get out of that fearful mode and get into Zen zone? So we're going to have them create a Zen zone. So that's something that you could um, have your client share. You know, there's their candle, their journal, their cozy chair, their favorite blanket, um, whatever it is. And that could be, I was just thinking that could be another little thing. Uh, to incorporate into one of your, the beginnings of one of your uh, conversations. I like that. And then you could have a happy hour with everyone in there. Zen, zen. Yeah. Yeah. It could be like a self, maybe a self-care theme, you mm -hmm. know, for that one in particular. Yeah. Awesome. All right. I'm scrolling through here. Did anybody have any questions that we could, Ooh, Bonnie mentioned something about a bingo game. Yes. I've seen people run bingo. That's super fun. Mm -hmm. 
Um, let's see, Kahoot. Marla, I haven't heard of Kahoot. Fun interactive quiz game. Ooh, so you guys, we're gonna, I'll go through the chat after this and I'll post the fun yeah. link that you guys have been sharing in here. So we have one big resource for all of it. Yes, everybody loved the Jeopardy. Complete random question. How do I connect my phone? We'll leave tech questions for after. Um, so if you want to just uh, PM or um, email support at fitproessentials.com, we can uh, handle and help you with any tech questions there. Uh, let's see. Goal setting workshop. Yes, you can totally do workshops like that. Highlight others. Yes. Does anybody have any questions? Just post them in the chat below if we didn't get or just unmute yourself. We'll keep this fun and social hour. <laughs> what do you recommend for the duration of happy hour? Carrie, how long are your happy hours? Well, I'm a talker, so I, I really don't put a cap on it, but I would say they run about an hour and a half. Okay. So. Yep. I'll probably block off an hour and then you can go later. Yeah. Make sure you have the pro version of Zoom. Yeah. You want to definitely be able to go. You don't want to cut it short. Yeah. And so I put on my event that it's an hour and some people pop off, you know, or whatever, but I'm, I mean, we talk, we hang out and talk. Yeah. I have a oh. question. I'm sorry if I can unmute myself. Um, what is, this is Monica. Um, if you wanted to make it just like an adult only uh, happy hour, is there a, uh, I guess a sensitive way to like tell them no kids or what, what do you suggest with that? Yeah, just call it adults only. Mm -hmm. Adult, adult time. Well, let's, let's adult tonight. We're going to adult. We're going to adult. Yeah, I like that. Um, I saw a question here, uh, maybe different, a different topic, but I love how we focus on our members, but what can we do to focus on our team? I think all of these could be used for a team meeting, a team get together. I mean, I think that's a great question. And um, I mean, I don't even have a team, but I think that's great. I do that with other you know, other coaches that I'm friends with. And that has actually been so beneficial in helping me keep my spirits up so that I can provide the energy to my clients. So I think that's a great question. Yes. In fact, I got a message from Adri this morning requesting a team social. <laughs> great. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be putting one on the schedule. Oh, Michelle is here. She said we've had a running challenge for our workouts to see what random heavy things we can use as weights. Oh, that's a really good idea. One of the girls was doing hip thrust with a Darth Vader statue. That's awesome. <laughs> oh, and dressing up. Dressing up. I know, I think, Carrie, you touched on this, right? For like dressing up for your social, wear a wig, wear a costume, mask, whatnot. Have, just have fun with it. Yeah. That'd be fun. Um, someone asked if you can post that heart uh, social share that was going around. Can we add that to the doc? Yeah. yeah. Yes, well, I, I have it in my files. Amazing. Um, I just had a thought and I lost it. Don't Hang on, I'll be back when it comes back. <laughs> How do you handle hey. someone drinking and being inappropriate? Mm. Mm, that's a good question. If somebody's being crass where you need to get rid of them, you can just get somebody off of the Zoom call. So when you're leading it and you hover over somebody's um, uh, video, there's three dots. You can click those three dots and you can remove them from the group. So if that ever becomes a problem, you can remove somebody so that they, and then definitely as soon as it's over, reach out to them and address what was going on. You can also make that in part of your, uh, um, uh, I want, oh. so, sorry, I was just going to, you can also put that as part of your, you know, just kind of an FYI, this, you know, is we are still in a whatever positive group. So whatever. If you feel like there's going to be someone with that issue, definitely I would address that up front. Also perfect because also you can also say, hey, a lot of our um, members have kids running around in the background or they're in a room next door. Please, uh, no profanity on the call. Yeah, and and you can say then that you would they would be moved. Yep. Yeah, you can set some boundaries, some guidelines. You can email them and you can go over call rules, Absolutely. and you can have fun with it too. Yeah. Perfect. Do you record happy hour and post the replay? Good question. Hey, Brenda. I don't. Yeah, I wouldn't. I personally would make it just an experience for the people that are on there. And that's part of the benefit. They have to show up to participate. I I was to... Go ahead, Carlos. Um, I was... We can't hear you. <laughs> Carlos, your audio is not working. 
Zoom is lifting their 40 minute time uh, limit right now on the free account. Oh, wow. That's true. Yeah. How about now? Yeah, that's amazing. Thank you for sharing that. Yep. Uh, yeah, we can hear you now. No, so I was going to say that because the increased use of Zoom nowadays, yep. um, one thing that we want to be uh, conscious about is, unfortunately, people are hacking into your Zoom rooms. Mm. Um, so you might want to be using passwords or use it inside your private groups when you post for the social events so you don't get, quote, unquote, outsiders uh, hacking into your Zoom account because it's already happening to a couple of my colleagues. So um, when you create events, either create a password or just make it inside your Facebook private group. Mm -hmm. Yeah, don't yeah, be careful with who you share your links with, for sure. Um, and yeah, if you want to require that extra level, especially if you guys are going to have a social and it's going to be tight and you guys are maybe talking about something sensitive, uh, that's not a bad idea to have a password protection. I just remembered my really super brilliant thoughts. <laughs> so, <laughs> as we are learning more about our clients and some of their skills and their, you know, their interests and things like that, um, before this all happened, my admin and I've been talking about doing, um, client ambassador program where if we've got clients with certain skills or certain loves passions for like hiking or gardening or whatever they were going to be kind of the ambassador for that and they're going to be the one to set up hikes or we're going to have a community garden right outside the gym and some one person's going to be in charge of that this might be a perfect opportunity to kind of really be tuning into what your clients are interested in yeah. and then using them in your community to later on or even now but to lead um your clients, because a lot of times if you're just, I know Carrie is small, like myself, um, 50 clients and it's hard. Well, of course I have Kisera as my awesome helper, but, but you know, when you're just one person, it's hard to do all the things you want to do. So incorporating your clients into that, and this is a great opportunity to start kind of thinking ahead to that. And then you could actually use that to roll out when we get back into regular life because I'm sure we're all starting to think about what can I, what can I roll out with a bang when people have their stimulus checks and people are starting to, you know, get back and they want to get out. So be thinking about what you could add to your programs as this goes along. Cause I feel like there's a lot of opportunity to spark new programs and interests in this. Absolutely. Love that. I also think it's super smart to be writing down the personal details of things that you want to maybe like write them a card about or mention and passing as a joke. Like you're paying attention to the little things with your clients because you're going to learn a lot about them when you do this. Mm -hmm. um, and then you can even send them like little gifts for their birthday or whatnot that, you know, really is a meaningful gift. Um, so depending on how many clients, obviously that you have, but that could be a really great way to connect on a deeper level with your people and show them that you're really paying attention. Yeah. Awesome. All right. I, I mean, with the time limit, uh, people are asking about the $15 a month on zoom. I think it's worth it for me. Um, obviously, cause I was going over the 40 minutes on pretty much every call. Um, but also for the recording and the cloud option, you can't do that with the free. And I don't know if there's any other settings, uh, that you have access to. I'm sure there are probably some settings that you have access to with the pro, but if you're gonna be using it on a regular basis, um, it might be worth it for you to upgrade, but I, I don't know about that time limit uh, lift on that 40 minutes, so. All right, what's the best time to run an a, a happy hour? Yes, we actually did talk about this, good question. This is uh, survey your people and find out. You probably have an idea like, Sunday afternoon, Saturday morning, Thursday night, could be a random time during the week, but give a couple of different options and then do a poll in your Facebook group um, or survey your clients, do a, like a, a survey monkey type of thing and then have them vote and then pick whichever one is the most popular. Yeah. Yep. Awesome. Thank you guys so much for being on and Carrie and Missy, you guys are absolutely amazing. Thank you for sharing your ideas and just for being so generous to hop on here and and be open with everybody and go through how you're running some awesome socials with your clients but have fun with it be creative um get one on the schedule that's the most important thing is to take action on one thing that you learned today or your own idea and uh just really connect and and over deliver and be that light for your community but carrie missy any final words to say here before we get going I just want to thank you for having us on. This was really fun. Um, it kind of got me excited to, to, with some new ideas for the next one. So um, I'm excited for tomorrow night. <laughs> awesome.
I love the idea of having a post or a running doc, maybe a post in the group with all people's other ideas. You know, yeah, yeah. such a good idea. And we'll do that because the, the chat will download. So I'll make sure. Yeah. And then we can even put it in the group and anybody can contribute and add to it too. Mm -hmm. So that's perfect. Well, you guys are amazing. Uh, thank you again for being on here. Let us know if we can help you in any way. Keep up all the greatness that you are doing right now in your community and with your tribe. So uh, reach out if you need anything at all and have a wonderful rest of your day. Thanks. Can I pop in with Jason? Jason's asking yeah. for the heart post. Which Jason is that? I'll post it in the group because I can't seem to pull it up off my computer right now. We'll it's just on my put own. it on the doc, Missy. We'll, we'll okay. add it to that doc in that way. Yeah, we'll just throw it in there. Sorry. Amazing. Oh, he put his email for you. Okay. Awesome. Perfect. All right. Thank you guys. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye.